Here we go again. Manchester United manager Ruben Amorim has drawn up a three-man wish list for signings next year, with Jared Branthwaite, Victor Gyokares, and Victor Osimhen among his targets, according to Fichajes. The 39-year-old only held his first training session at Carrington on Monday, but rumors about his potential signings at United have been circulating for some time. According to fresh reports in Spain, Branthwaite is said to be first on his list. The Everton defender was heavily linked with a move to Old Trafford during Eric Ten Hag's reign and saw two bids from United rejected in the summer transfer window. The 22-year-old is seen as an ideal piece to strengthen United's back line and could slot in as left centre-back in Amarim's new 3-4-3 system. Up front, Amarim is said to be targeting Gyokiers, who rose to prominence during his time at Sporting Lisbon. The Portuguese manager is reportedly convinced the Swedish forward could bring goals, intensity, and tireless pressing to the Premier League, having impressed during his 18 months in Portugal. Osim Hen, meanwhile, is viewed as an alternative to Gyokeras. The Galatasaray forward, labeled the most complete striker in the world, is not Amarim's first choice option up front despite Napoli's willingness to part ways with the Nigerian next year. Amarim has previously stated he will not raid sporting for new signings in the January transfer window, though moves after the season have not been ruled out. The 39-year-old will be hoping to address Man United's offensive woes quickly, with the Red Devils currently the fourth lowest scoring team in the Premier League after 11 games, having scored just 12 goals. United are not expected to conduct major business as early as January, with reports suggesting Amarim will focus on maximizing the untapped potential within the squad, rather than making significant changes to the team inherited from Ten Hag. The Portuguese tactician will take charge of his first game on Sunday, as Manchester United face Ipswich Town away. Meanwhile, yesterday, it's revealed that Bruno Fernandes has returned to Manchester United training ahead of Sunday's much-anticipated Premier League match at Ipswich Town, working with head coach Ruben Amarim for the first time. The skipper was granted permission by Portugal boss Roberto Martinez to leave the international camp, ahead of their 1-1 draw in Croatia. Bruno was suspended for the encounter in split after picking up a yellow card, as well as scoring, in the 5-1 win over Poland. It was his second caution of the UEFA Nations League campaign and meant he was ineligible for the Croatia clash, although teammate Diogo Delope did come on as a substitute. Our number 8 met Amarim and the new coaching team at Carrington on Tuesday and got to work on the training pitch. Of course, Fernandez has been keeping a close eye on Ruben's progress in Lisbon, as a former sporting favorite and avid watcher of the Portuguese Liga champions. The first game of the Amarim era takes place away to Ipswich Town on Sunday afternoon, 4.30 p.m. GMT kickoff. Fernandez goes into the Portman Road fixture in great form, with four goals in his last four appearances for the Reds. Earlier this month, before the start of the international break, Fernandez sat down with club reporter Sam Carney to look forward to Amorim's arrival as head coach. Obviously for me, what stands out is the connection he has with the players, Bruno explained. You see it at the end of the game when a manager is going from your club in the middle of the season and with all the things that they have still to win. And you see the way they say goodbye to him, the way they feel, they make him feel part of the team and how they treat him. So it shows that this is a great character and he's someone that gives his all to the players on the other side. Manchester United continued their preparations for Sunday's Premier League match against Ipswich Town with a focused training session at their Carrington base today. Under the watchful eye of head coach Ruben Amarim and his coaching staff, the players worked through various drills and exercises aimed at sharpening their form. The session saw full participation of Luke Shaw, Kabi Mainu, and young defender Lenny Yoro, who were all involved and actively participated in team activities. Their inclusion highlights their readiness to contribute as the team approaches a crucial fixture. The attacking department was fully represented, with senior forwards such as Marcus Rashford leading the charge. The forwards worked on attacking combinations and finishing drills, showing sharpness and a determination to make an impact on Sunday. A mix of first-team regulars and academy players joined the training, 
creating a vibrant and competitive environment. Talented youngsters had the chance to impress the coaching staff as they participated in passing exercises, positional play, and match simulations. These sessions provide valuable experience for the academy players while ensuring the senior squad stays match ready. Key highlights from today's session include defensive drills, midfield creativity, forward intensity, and team coordination. All defenders focused on positioning and ball recovery, ensuring defensive stability, while all midfield including Kabi Mainu shown in ball distribution exercises, linking up play efficiently. All forward players like Rashford and other senior forwards demonstrated clinical finishing during shooting practice. However, the squad worked collectively on tactical setups with Amarim emphasizing quick transitions and defensive solidity. Amarim's influence is already becoming evident, as the players showed increased intensity and discipline during the session. His emphasis on tactical awareness and structured play was visible in the way the team approached their drills. The head coach was actively involved, offering guidance and encouraging players to push their limits. The presence of young players alongside senior stars reflects United's long-term vision under Amorim. By integrating academy talents into first-team training, the club is fostering a culture of development while maintaining the competitive edge required for Premier League success. Players like Kabi Mainu and Lenny Yoro are proving their potential and could soon be valuable contributors in upcoming matches. As match day approaches, the focus will shift towards fine-tuning strategies tailored to Ipswich's playing style. With a fully fit attacking lineup and a motivated squad, United fans have every reason to be optimistic. The team's unity and determination were on full display today, offering a glimpse of what could be an exciting performance on Sunday. Manchester United will now enter the final stages of preparation as they aim to secure a positive result against Ipswich Town on Sunday. Fans can expect a determined and well-prepared side ready to bounce back after the international break. In other news, the big buzz around Manchester United recently has been the arrival of Ruben Amarim. Fans and pundits alike are eager to see how he shapes the team. A major talking point is the footage from his first training session at Carrington. The footage showed him working closely with the squad, implementing his tactics, and trying out his preferred 3-4-2-1 formation. This setup involves three central defenders, two wingbacks, and a striker supported by two attacking midfielders. In the training footage, Luke Shaw, Johnny Evans, and Fernandez made up the back three, with Tyrell Malaysia and Anthony playing as wingbacks. The midfield pairing was Casemiro and youngster Kabi Mainu, while the front positions were filled by Mason Mount, Ahmad Diallo, and Marcus Rashford. Amorim's intense and direct coaching style was clear to see, making fans dream big. While it's early days, seeing the manager already trying to bring his tactical style to Old Trafford has certainly brought hope and excitement. Who's in and who's out? The January transfer window is creeping closer, and Manchester United is always linked with plenty of names. One of the rumors doing the rounds involves United making an £84 million bid for Atalanta's striker, Adamola Lookman. Jay quickly dismissed this, stating that it's highly unlikely, and pointing out that the club would not spend that much right now. Another name in the mix is Swedish forward Victor Gjokares who has links with Amorim due to their time together at Sporting CP. Reports suggest Manchester United might have scouted him during a recent international match. With United's current goal-scoring struggles, Jay suggests that Gyokares could be an option to strengthen the squad. In terms of departures, there's speculation that Antony could be on his way out. Rumors indicate that Manchester United might not see him as a key part of the future, and could target Jovan Cabral from Sporting CP instead. This could just be speculation, but it reflects the uncertainty surrounding some players with the arrival of a new manager. Manchester United has a long-standing tradition of bringing academy players into the first team. This focus on youth development seems to be a key part of Ruben Amorim's plans too. In the recent training session, fans spotted 16-year-old centre-back Louis Jackson participating alongside the first-team squad. It's a sign that Amarim is willing to give young talent a chance. Kabi Mainu, 
a young midfielder with lots of potential, seems to be particularly favored by the new manager. Jay is confident that Mainu is ready to step up and make a big impact. Amorim's history at sporting shows that he's not afraid to trust young players, and many are hoping he'll continue that trend at Manchester United. With injuries in the first team and budget constraints, Jay highlights the likelihood that Amarim will have to rely on academy players this season. There's a good chance some of these players will see minutes in the first team soon. For fans, this is an exciting prospect. There's nothing quite like watching a young, homegrown talent rise through the ranks. As Manchester United heads into the next phase under Amorim, Fans can expect more tactical changes and perhaps a few fresh faces in the squad. The next match, an away game against Ipswich Town, might provide a clearer picture of how Amorim's Manchester United will look on the pitch. While the training footage has given us a glimpse, the real tests are yet to come. There's still a lot of speculation about transfers, but it's clear that the January window will be important for the new manager. Whether he brings in new players or promotes academy talents, his decisions will shape the club's immediate future. In the meantime, fans can't help but get excited. Jay's infectious optimism after seeing just a snippet of training is a feeling shared by many. There's a sense that Manchester United could be on the verge of something special, even if it's just a glimmer for now. Manchester United fans are no strangers to hype and excitement. The arrival of a new manager always brings hope for change and improvement. Ruben Amorim has brought his tactical ideas and a clear philosophy to the club, and the early signs suggest that he's willing to make bold choices and lean on young talent. Whether the team thrives under his leadership will be the true test, but for now, the focus is on settling into his system and making the most of the current squad. Fans like Jay are eagerly anticipating what's next, and it's hard not to share their enthusiasm. In other news, it's revealed that, following his first few months in charge at Manchester United, new manager Ruben Amarim is already preparing for next summer's transfer window. After closely evaluating the current squad, Amarim has identified a clear need to improve the midfield. He believes two key additions are necessary if Manchester United are to compete at the highest level, a strong defensive midfielder and a versatile attacking midfielder. Amorim has been impressed with some areas of the Manchester United squad, but he feels the midfield lacks a true defensive anchor. In his preferred 3-4-3 formation, the defensive midfielder is a crucial role. This player needs to shield the back three, break up opposition attacks, and provide a reliable base for building attacks. It's a role that requires discipline, good positioning, and physical presence. Amorim is looking for a player who can dominate the midfield and protect the defense, especially in high-pressure games. Currently, Manchester United's midfield options lack a dedicated defensive specialist. Some players have been tried in the role, but Amarim feels none have fully convinced him. To succeed with his system, he needs someone who can bring stability to the center of the pitch, someone who can win the ball back consistently and start attacks with accurate passing. A strong defensive midfielder would also give more freedom to the team's attacking players, knowing that they have solid cover behind them. In addition to a defensive midfielder, Amorim also wants a player who can operate in one of the two numbers, 10 positions in his 3-4-3 setup. This player needs to be creative, skillful, and capable of linking up with the forward line. The attacking midfielders in Amorim's system are not just creators. They are expected to press high, make runs into the box, and contribute to the team's overall defensive effort. Amorim's formation relies heavily on fluid and dynamic attacking play. To make his system work, he needs a player who can find space between the lines, deliver key passes, and score goals. He's looking for a midfielder who can take on defenders, create chances, and be a consistent threat in the final third. Amorim has a clear vision for Manchester United, and improving the midfield is central to his plans. He wants a team that is strong defensively, but also capable of quick transitions and fluid attacking play. A quality defensive midfielder and a versatile attacking midfielder are essential pieces of that puzzle. With these two additions, Amarim hopes to bring more balance to the squad. A reliable defensive midfielder would allow the team to control games better, especially in tough away fixtures, 
while a creative number 10, 10 would add the flair and unpredictability needed to break down stubborn defenses. Amorim's desire to strengthen the midfield suggests that some of the current midfielders may face increased competition for their places. The new signings could push some players down the pecking order or even lead to a few exits in the summer. However, Competition for spots is something Amarim believes is crucial for a top club. He wants every player to be at their best, knowing that they have to fight for their position. The Manchester United manager is confident that with the right additions, the team can be a serious contender in the Premier League and Europe. It's clear that he's not afraid to make bold decisions to build a squad that fits his vision. While the current season is still ongoing, Ruben Amorim's thoughts are already turning to the summer transfer window. It's expected that Manchester United will be linked with several midfielders as the search begins for the right players to fit his system. The club's fans will be eager to see who Amorim targets and how the these new signings can elevate the team's performance. Manchester United has a strong tradition of top-quality midfielders, and Amorim wants to continue that legacy. The summer promises to be an exciting time for the club, as they look to strengthen and build a team capable of challenging for major honors. On the other side, Ruben Amorim will lead Manchester United for the first time as head coach against Ipswich Town, and he's hoping for good news on the injury front before the match. Amarim takes over a team that has performed well under interim manager Ruud van Nistelrooy, with three wins and one draw from the last four games. However, injuries remain a concern. After suffering an injury earlier this season, Mount was included in the squad for United's recent 3-0 win over Leicester City. He didn't come off the bench. He did play in the Europa League against Park earlier in the week, showing signs of recovery. His availability for the Ipswich game could give Amarim more attacking options. However, Martinez's situation is more worrying. The defender picked up a back injury during the Leicester match, and Argentina coach Lionel Scaloni shared that the pain worsened during the international break. Martinez underwent tests and was ruled unfit to join his national team. Amorim will be eager for an update, as Martinez is a key figure in United's defense. Meanwhile, Kabi Mainu, the young midfielder, hasn't played since early October due to a hamstring injury. Ruud van Nistelrooy revealed before the international break that while Mainu is making progress, he hasn't returned to full training yet. A comeback for Ipswich seems unlikely. On the other side, there are long-term absences Luke Shaw and Lenny Yoro. Both defenders have yet to play this season due to injuries, but recently returned to team training. While it's good news for United, Amorim is likely to ease them back into action. A spot on the bench for the Ipswich game could be on the cards. However, Maguire hasn't played since his injury against Aston Villa. He's still working indoors at Carrington, but may have made progress during the international break. The left-back Tyrell Malaysia recently revealed the struggles of his 18-month absence due to knee surgeries. While Malaysia played for the under-21s in the EFL trophy, it might be a while before he's ready for senior action. So, what's next for United? With Ipswich Town coming up, Ruben Amarim faces a tricky start to his tenure. He'll be relying on the medical team to provide updates on key players like Martinez, Mount, and Maynou. In the meantime, he can take confidence from the performances under Ruud van Nistelrooy and focus on building momentum for the rest of the season. Fans will be hoping for a strong showing at Portman Road as United enter a new chapter under Amarim's leadership.